Welcome to Madonna Paradise Unboxings, and in this video is going to be the series called Madonna and History. Today marks the 24th anniversary of the release of the album Bedtime Stories, October the 25th of 1994. In this video, I'm going to discuss the album, briefly the chart position of the album in the U U.S. Billboard charts, the singles, and my thoughts and personal experience being that I'm a longtime Madonna fan. Bedtime Stories was Madonna's sixth studio album and was recorded on Maverick and Sire Records. She wanted to go more mainstream with the album, so she worked with the likes of Babyface, Dave Jam Hall, Dallas Austin, and Nellie Hooper, who was famously known for producing and working with the Icelandic performer Bjork. Taking a look over here to my left behind me, the album cover you can see for Bedtime Stories and my original Bedtime Stories t-shirt in the background, you can tell that Madonna was wanting to soften her image. And why was she wanting to do that? It was because of the backlash that she received from her work two years prior with Erotica and the sex book. So you can tell here and that the album and its content lyrically um, was about love, romance, and sorrow, but less sexually charged. Her image change began with the single that was recorded in 1994 called I'll Remember, and it was for the film With Honors, directed by Alec Kashishian, the man behind her documentary film called Truth or Dare that followed her around on her Blonde Ambition World Tour in 1990. Critics describe Bedtime Stories, the album, as being autobiographical for one song in particular, and that is Human Nature, where Madonna is addressing the controversy surrounding the sex book and the erotica album. But there is other songs on there that I deem personal, and that is Secret, because in that song she's looking more into spirituality, self-love, and uh, self-happiness, where Inside of Me, which sounds like a song between lovers, can be seen that way, but it was actually about her mother. And the last track I'm going to mention is Take a Bow. Now, Madonna is famously linked to three actors. Sean Penn, to whom she was married to for four years, Warren Beatty, and Antonio Banderas. But Madonna has been documented several times. Uh, first time in her infamous documentary, Truth or Dare, for saying that Sean is the love of her life. And then again at uh, Sean's charity for Haiti. And again for her charity for Malawi, for raising Malawi. She said again that she's in love with Sean. So I deem that song about Sean Penn. Take a bow. The album was praised by critics, generally for the lyrics and production. And it was up uh, for nomination at the 38th Annual Grammy Awards for the Best Pop Album. Commercially, Bedtime Stories did better than Erotica, debuting at number three on the Billboard 200s and it was certified triple platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America. Take a Bow spent seven weeks at number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, but her other singles, Bedtime Story and Human Nature, did not fare as well on the charts. However, Madonna did promote this album fairly well. She had two specials on MTV that I've seen here in the United States. I'm sure it was seen across the world. The first one that I seen was No Bull, The Making of Take a Bow. And then later on, for the release of Bedtime Story, the single and video, uh, Madonna had a party, <laughs> which was uh, Madonna Pajama Party. And also, she went on the 35th Annual American Music Awards and performed Take a Bow with Babyface in 1995, as well as performing at the Sam Remo Festival and Wet and & Das, and also the 1995 Brit Awards performing Bedtime Story.
Madonna released four singles from the album, Secret being released on September the 27th of 1994, Take a Bow on December the 6th of 1994, Bedtime Story was released February the 13th, a couple of days after my birthday, in 1995, and... The final single, Human Nature, was released on June 6th of 1995. This section is going to be about my personal experience with this era. Uh, I had to turn the light on because it's gotten dark, so the lighting's going to suck. But anyway, I went and picked up this album on the release day on October the 25th of 1994. And I picked up the cassette and the CD. Um, my mother gave me money to pick it up, and I drove my grandmother's car to go get it. So, And I always enjoyed the length of the drive. You know, it took 30 minutes to get there, 30 minutes to get back. So it's like an hour driving. So on the way home, I got to listen to 30 minutes of the album. And then when I got home, I just, like, popped in the CD and started it over and listened to it in my bedroom from start to finish. So, um, like I've mentioned in the erotica anniversary video where I talk about how things were, it's the same thing with bedtime story. Uh, you know, no internet, no cell phone, none of that stuff except for those phones. You can have like a cell phone, but it wasn't what we consider today's smartphones and flip phones and all that stuff. It was a huge block phone and it had a cord on it. It looked like one of those regular old tele landline phone type of things, but digital. So we had that, but boy, it was expensive to use it. You don't, you didn't talk on it very much. So uh, we rarely, rarely used that, and that was like for the car. So that wasn't like internet. So you had to get your, you know, listen. To, you couldn't listen to things instantly. Um, you couldn't get things leaked. Things weren't leaked. You didn't get that stuff. Uh, you know, you only heard it like on MTV News when they play samples. Um, they do interviews with Madonna that she did a. There was an interview with Junior Vasquez on the remixes for Secret. I remember watching that and recording that on MTV. You know, her MTV specials, uh, uh, Madonna No Bull Take a Bow and uh, Pajama Party. She also um, did like remix videos. There was a remix video called the Danorama remix for uh, Secret. And there was one for bedtime stories, which I didn't see on MTV, but I saw Secret. So you got you had to watch the music videos when they aired. You you waited for that. You was always watching MTV to check out that hottest and latest music video. And you couldn't choose what video you wanted to watch. It's a, a service, you know, you, like regular TV. You watch what's on there. So it's not like today where you can pick and choose everything. So you got to sit and listen to every all kinds of music. So, um, yeah, that's why I know about all kinds, which is different now. You can just focus on whatever you want. So, you had to wait for the single to come out. So, I went out and got the cassette single. That's how you got to hear it, and also on the radio. You, you could request it all the time. So, it was a, an experience. You had to wait for the album to come out to hear it in full. And that's why I'm a little bit old school on not wanting, you know, it's hard not to want to, you know, listen to leaked material, but uh, I did fairly well with the Rebel Heart album and not listening to maybe but three or four songs uh, from the album. And it was much later, really close to the release date before I really was listening to it. So um, before then, you know, you just got to have that full experience of putting the record on, uh, which not, wasn't a vinyl, a CD on, and listening to it in full and just taking it in. Uh, that was a real true excitement. Nowadays, you hear everything before you go get the physical product. And to me, that kind of ruins that experience. So I like to do it the old vanilla way, you want to call it, old school way. You know, but, uh, you know, I, I upload my music to my my smartphones and all that stuff now. But it was quite a exhilarating and, and intoxicating experience. Uh, I loved those Madonna specials on MTV and VH1 would also do things with her from time to time. And she'd also come on other TV shows for interviews and whatnot. Um, I really miss those days, you know. Um, you know, she could probably do that stuff even now, but she'd just have to produce it herself and put it out. Like her own exclusive interviews, you know, she don't have MTV to do it. 
there, MTV does not exist the way it did in, in the 80s and 90s. And, uh, you know, in the early 2000s, it started heading towards what it is. It's nothing today. But it would be cool if MTV came back. But I guess they don't serve a purpose. We have YouTube. So, I loved this album when it came out. I loved the single, the first one, Secret. Love Take a Bow, Bedtime Story, and uh, songs like um, Forbidden Love, Love Tribe to Welcome Me, Don't Stop, um, Sanctuary. I really love Sanctuary. Beautiful. I like that that Euro dance uh, dub, whatever it was, music. I'm not sure what it was called. I forget, but you know, it's like Bjork's music. So she got to work with. Uh, well, not exactly she didn't get to work with Bjork because on uh, VH1's Behind the Music, there's a clip of Bjork talking and she said, I wrote the song as a favor to my friend Nellie Hooper. No offense to Madonna, but I was really doing it for him. So she probably had already had the track recorded and Madonna listened to it and made her changes lyrically. Uh, or maybe she didn't touch the lyrics. Maybe she just, you know, put her own spin musically. Uh, and vocally, the way Madonna does. So I really loved the video and the song for Bedtime Story in Sanctuary. Um, it's actually, you know, a very mellow um, R&B pop album. It was the mainstream sound at the time. You know, she was going for that. So Madonna's always had a, a theme with R&B, hip hop kind of stuff, but she's more pop, but she likes to incorporate that type of music in there. So, um, the, the songs that I listed are, are my favorite, you know, some of my favorites. I don't know if I, um, I can't read this because <laughs> it's so dark, uh, the track listing. But Human Nature is very, you know, R&B. Uh, I really loved Human Nature because that was her, you know, little flying of the bird to, um, all the backlash that she received for her, um, her error previous uh, previous error to the bedtime story um, survivals another um, you know it's a good track but you know secret don't stop love tried to welcome me um, forbidden love take a bow and I don't know if there's another those, those are like my favorite tracks off the album there may may be some others give and take but I, I you know it's not it's like naming the whole album but it was a great time to be Madonna fan you know watching all those videos as they came out uh, being a, a subscriber to the icon fanzine in the Madonna fan club uh, I didn't pull those out but I've pulled them out before and shared them with you I got all the issues from the uh, bedtime Stories era. That's another way I got my info, too. Inside Scoop from Madonna herself, who participated in the club, as I've mentioned in all of my videos. And I read all those and got all my info about what was coming up, what was going on, chart stuff, different stuff going on in different parts of the world, you know, how things were charting, what was going on, what she was doing. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed watching her videos, seeing her live performances that were filmed from other... Um, countries like from Germany at Wetten Das and the uh, Italian uh, San Remo Festival I think that and then her, uh, her performing at the 1995 Brit Awards with Bedtime Story that was such a cool performance and then also uh, the performance with Babyface at the American Music Awards so it was really great she had like a geisha look going on in uh with her costuming and, and her hairstyle for that performance. Uh, she looked really nervous too when she was performing it, but uh, it was all around a great era. I really enjoyed it. Um, looking back on it, you know, I have nostalgic feelings for it. Uh, it's It means, each album means something to me, as I've always said, you know, because these are signposts in my life growing up. Um, I was 17 when this album came out, and I was also interviewed for the Joplin Globe newspaper when this album came out. So I listed Secret as my favorite single and Bedtime Stories as my favorite album because I always 
Throughout my entire life, I've always stayed current and loved each album that Madonna's released, and I haven't stopped today. It's the same today. Uh, you know, I love whatever she releases each time. You know, if I didn't love what she released, I wouldn't be a fan. I wouldn't be making these videos. You know, I can't, uh, I'm not a fan that loves the past Madonna only and despises her now. I just can't be that kind of fan. I'm not that way. That's not who I am. Um, the only way that I can be a fan of somebody is if I currently love what they're doing, even now. I mean, yes, of course, I've listened to uh, the New Wave 80s, but I don't listen to half the people nowadays that put out stuff. It's just like their old stuff, but I rarely listen to it. To be hardcore, obsessive Madonna fan that I am, I love everything that it is that she's done up to today. So that's my explanation of that. I've, I've done this so many times talking about it, but... You know, I just have to mention it because, you know, I'm getting all nostalgic over here about bedtime stories, the album. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give it a like. Um, click my bell for notifications on the icon bell thing so you can know when I post a new video. And uh, don't forget to comment down below. So keep enjoying Madonna. Happy 24th. Bedtime stories.